You're listening to the Calling Book Creator Podcast, episode 60. And in this episode, I'm going to be sharing 10 things you can do immediately to release your fear and move forward with clarity and confidence if you're worried that the book you're creating won't sell. Stay tuned. Recently, I did a poll inside of my Coloring Book Creator Club Facebook group where I asked my participants were experiencing challenges or concern or worry over whether or not the project that they are creating will sell. I it had an intuitive feeling to even add that as a polling choice to begin with, because I know having worked with dozens of authors now and helping them create dozens of books, that that is a concern that does come up and it's understandably so. It didn't surprise me that that was one of the highest rating issues. And of course, it inspired me to do a podcast episode around it because I'm going to be opening the doors again to the next cohort of my coloring book and digital planner creator society program. And I know this is a question and a concern that's going to come up immediately when I saw that response. I knew what steps I wanted to cover because I've seen it in my own experience. And I wanted to make sure that I covered it so that you listening as you are maybe thinking about creating a book or if you already have books out there already and they just aren't selling as well as you'd like them to, these tips will help you in that regard. So the first one, number one, you're seeing on the screen, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're listening on the podcast, you can also click on the link and go over to YouTube and go check out the video version of the podcast over there. So I'm now doing it audio and video now. So number one is first do your due diligence. And what I mean by that is do your research. We can have all kinds of ideas and things that we have a personal interest in that we think would be something that would be fun to make a book around. And that's always a good place to start. But when we are trying to create something that we want to put in the marketplace, i.e. have it sell, it also needs to be something that the marketplace has already expressed interest in. In this context, we don't necessarily want to be first in mark first in market, meaning that there's not an established audience already looking for this type of book. Now, I want to be clear. When we're looking for potential ideas for books we might want to make, and let's say we go into Google and we type in the subject matter of our book and we see options come up, that's first of all a good thing. And then of course those search results are usually pointing towards Amazon or Etsy listings. And of course, we want to check those listings out. And so I want to make a point here by saying that if you're doing your due diligence, your research, and let's say you have an interest in flowers, if you want to make a flower coloring book or a journal planner that focuses on flowers or, you know, something around that nature or around that, you know, design. And you go and do your due diligence, you go do your research, and you find there's not only one, but maybe even a dozen books or more on the similar subject. I want to make sure I say this is don't become discouraged and say, well, that's already been done. I can't do it. Quite the contrary. If you're seeing other titles out there already in the genre in which you want to create your book around, that's actually a good thing because those books wouldn't exist if there wasn't a market for them, people meaning people looking to buy them. Now, I deep dive into this in great depth in a resource that I have, which is right now currently a free audio course where it helps you validate your coloring book idea before you make it. I'm going to put the link to that also here in the show notes or in the YouTube description so you can go check out that course. It's completely free, but it go, walks you through the steps to validate the idea, meaning you want to do your due diligence. You want to see if there are other books in the marketplace already out there. You want to see the reviews that the book is getting. You want to look at the design of the book. You want to see what the title of the book is. You want to see who is it geared towards. Is it geared towards a certain demographic? Because one, not every book is for everybody. The other thing I want to say, too, is if someone buys, let's say, what you would construe as your competitor's book, why would they not want to buy your book, too? I'm very familiar with the coloring book space with the people who purchase the books. And if they love a book, they'll buy it. They'll buy multiples of different authors' books. So I wouldn't worry about competition in that respect. But again, in the audio course, 
the validate before you make it in my coloring book prep idea prep guide. I walk you through how to research the market, how viable it is to see how you can then find your place in the market, because that's all you really need to do. You need to find your place in the market. Maybe instead of a book on flowers, just very general, maybe your book is focusing only, only, only on one type of flower. That could be an option. Or perhaps your book could be positioned around people who are also wanting to learn more about gardening. Maybe that's a particular positioning that you could do with your book that would make your book a little different. So let's say if you are a gardener and you understand this particular kind of flower, how to feed it, what kind of soil it needs, little secret hacks and things that you know about that the general lay person who's not a gardener, but has an interest in it wouldn't know, but you can share those on your book as well. So you could share things beyond just coloring pages. You can share gardening tips. Let's take it a step further. Let's say even that you know how to take the, the petals from a certain kind of flower and even make teas out of them and other types of, you know, there's some flowers that are edible even. Look for what your unique point of differentiation is in the marketplace. Don't just make it just a book about flowers. Dive deeper into the genre, the area, the subject matter, and also do a check with your own area of expertise, because that's also going to influence what you put in your book and what's going to help yours stand apart within the marketplace, not from the marketplace, but from within it. Moving on to number two, pick an idea that you can truly get behind. It's going to take some time to put your book together, but not just that, because it's not just about creating the book and putting it up on Amazon and then off you go. It's also about getting out there with the book. It's about talking about the book. It's about connecting with people and communities and places where you can get the book in front of the people that would potentially be a great fit for your book. And so you're going to need to really want to pick a topic that you can really do a deep dive on, that you can really understand and study the market and find out where you can turn your book from just a book, but into an experience. It's actually something I'm doing right now with a book that I'm working on, a book project I'm working on, which I'm actually calling a passion project. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. But I'm looking at all the different ways that I can talk about this book and connect with other people around the subject that my book covers and actually create even a unique experience that I don't really see happening out there in the marketplace with this particular genre of book that I'm doing. But again, in order for me to do all of the things I'm doing, because it's requiring a lot of extra energy to put this book together, not just in the physicality of the actual product, but all of the system that I'm building around the book, because that is what's going to help the book to sell. So I'm really trying Truly behind the idea behind the book because I really want to see to it that is it succeeds and it's something that I'm like I said I'm passionate about it it's not just a oh this is a way to make a couple of bucks kind of idea okay number three adjust your mindset to either you're going to get the lesson or you're going to get the cash now what I mean by that is our mindsets will impact how long it takes us to develop our products it impacts what we decide to put in our products. It impacts who we're going to reach out to, if anyone, to help us get spread the word about our products. And even as you are creating your book, you're going to run across roadblocks. You're going to have issues possibly with finding designs. You're going to have issues with possibly formatting the book. You're going to have issues with trying to get the book uploaded to say like Amazon, KDP, for an example, or whoever else you're using. You're going to have, because especially if it's your first time doing it, you're going to run into issues. I don't know anyone yet that's, I help, that I've personally worked with to help them create a book that they've not run into issues. And your mindset is going to determine whether or not you keep moving forward or you stop dead in the water. So I say, if you are have thought about this or you've been working on a book project and maybe you've gotten stumped because life happens and things go on and you can't always be as, you know, as diligent as you want to on your project because life is lifing, as some of the kids say. And so you might feel a little discouraged. 
being able to adjust your mindset so that you can actually keep moving forward, even in the face of challenges, is going to determine how well you do moving forward. And I've had situations just with the tech alone where I've been trying to upload a file and it's not working or I'm trying to, the margins are off and my artwork is going over the trim line. And if, you know, I have to keep going back in and readjusting the file and re-upload it again and look at it and it's still, you know, still not right. Or I get the proof back from, let's say the printer and the color is off, or there's some weird action happening on the pages that I didn't anticipate or something I needed to do that I thought I may have done but didn't do or whatever happened. And so you can make the decision in that moment when you hit those roadblocks that you are going to stop and give up or you're going to move forward. And if you move forward and push through the roadblocks, the challenges that come up for you, you're going to learn a valuable lesson as a result of that. You're going to learn when you are creating future products, for an example, how to make sure that all of your artwork is within the margins. So you're going to understand that if you want the pages to have full bleed, you're going to have to blow up the screen, let's say in Canva, and really look to make sure that that artwork is completely bleeding off the page. That's what they mean by full bleed. Otherwise, what happens is when you upload the file, there, the, the services computer system picks up on that and it rejects the file. So you have to go back and check things again. And sometimes things can be so minute and so hairline that you can't really see it, but the, the computer system picks it up when the file gets uploaded. That's a common one that happens, which is why I'm using that as an example. If you decide to give up because let's say you've uploaded the file three times to Amazon and it get, keeps getting rejected and you can't find out why, you're going to get through that challenge and you're going to learn something that you won't forget. So when you do future projects, you won't have that lesson to have to learn again. So that's why I say by adjusting your mindset and moving through the challenges, you're going to get the lesson or, or the cash and if you're consistent, you're going to get both. But you can't get that until you get the lesson so that you can course correct and do it the way it needs to be done so that you can get to the thing that you want, which is to sell more books. So that's number three. Number four, pre-sell as you create. This is something that I'm really going to start pushing a lot more and emphasizing a lot more with current and future uh, community members of the society. I don't believe in waiting until the book is finished before you start to sell it. There are things that you can do to start generating interest in your project as you're creating it. As a matter of fact, I highly recommend that you do that because you can do all your due diligence, you can research the market, you can see what's out there, find your point of differentiation, Pick an idea that you can get behind, get your mindset right so you can work through your challenges and all of that. But if you are not willing to put it out there as you're working on it to see if anyone would actually pay you for it, I would say that you could potentially be doing yourself a big disservice. And I'll tell you why. is because as creators, we have the habit. I don't care if it's coloring books, jewelry, art, whatever. We have the habit of wanting to go into our cave and go do our thing and never tell anyone what we're doing and then wait until the day that it's all buttoned up and published and everything looks great. And then we maybe do one or two posts and maybe tell one or two people, maybe a family member, a couple of friends, and it kind of just drops there as a thud. And all of that energy and time and challenge you went through to get the book done just sort of falls flat because you're not out there talking about it. So I encourage all of my students to do is to start building up audience as you're creating the book. That means having certain things in place, putting imagery out there that shows what the book is going to look like. Have some kind of a way to collect email address and contact information so that you can keep them abreast of your progress as you're creating the book. And yes, going so far as to offering the book for sale as you're creating it. Don't be afraid to ask someone 
to buy your book as you're making it. And I'll tell you something, if one person, if one person buys your book as you're working on it, that's going to be the fastest way to handle number three, which is adjusting your mindset. Because someone has actually paid you and you got to deliver on what they paid you for. So let's get your ideas out there, get your initial graphics out there so people can see what the book is going to look like. Even if you change things, at least get it out there so people can see it and ask them to buy. Ask them to support you in buying. You can offer it for a lower price than what it's going to be when it actually comes out. Pre-selling books is the number one thing that almost any New York Times bestselling author will tell you. As a matter of fact, pre-sales actually count more heavily towards the success of a book before the book hits the bookshelves. It influences whether or not you even make it to the New York Times bestseller list. So pre-selling is not only an acceptable practice, it's actually almost a required practice. And a lot of us in our space don't think about that. So again, You'll learn how to talk about your book. You'll learn how to get excitement generated around your book. And yes, all you have to do is say it's available for pre-sale, available for pre-order. Maybe there's some bonus things. You can maybe give them a digital iteration of the book if it's physical or vice versa. And again, you there's ways to do that. Community building, list building, and yes, asking for the sale. And nothing's going to light a fire under you faster than actually having have collected money. Now you got to get, roll your sleeves up and get focused and work on your book. This ties into number five, get in front of your book. This is just ties in perfectly everything I just said. Be willing to get on Facebook Live. Be willing to maybe get on someone's podcast or maybe start your own podcast. This may mean starting a Facebook group, doing TikTok videos, reaching out to other organizations that are aligned with your subject matter and asking if you can come on and be a guest in their group or on their YouTube channel or podcast. Speak to a local group. It might mean that you contact people in your local community, community centers, uh, nursing homes, hospitals. If you've got an idea that would be of benefit to the community, find out where those people hang out in your community and pitch yourself as someone looking for an opportunity to talk about it. And make that the number one thing that you really do is how can I find opportunities to get in front of my book and share it, just freely share it. And let and you never know what opportunities can open up for you, but you've got to be willing to ask for them. So that's what I mean by getting in front of the book. All righty. Now let's move on to number six. Number six is claim your identity as a publisher author. This is what I mean by that. We as creators tend, again, to create what we create and we do it and we kind of want to do it behind the scenes and in silence. When you are a published author, no matter what kind of book you've done, that's an accomplishment that garners respect. Almost anyone respects someone when they introduce themselves as the author of whatever their book project is about. People look at you differently when you introduce yourself that way. People obviously want to know what your book is about. Guess what that does? opens up the pathway for you to be able to talk about the book project. But a lot of us have do the book and then we don't tell anyone, we don't talk about the book project. And it's a huge disservice. And a lot of the reason why we don't do it is because we don't, we think of it as something that we did, not something that is about who we are. We are an author. We are a publisher. And while I know it can seem conceited or maybe self-centered, or maybe it can feel a little off-putting or unnerving to do that, but I'm telling you, more people than not will be very curious to want to know what your book is about, where can they get it, and of course, to be really bold in it, be willing to carry copies of your book with you. If your book isn't ready yet, carry postcards carry bookmarks, carry anything that lets people see what your book is about. I recommend this highly because what drives identity drives action. So if I identify a certain way and I own that about myself, 
and I freely share that information with people, if I've got something to leave them, either, like I said, a postcard or the physical book or a bookmark or whatever I do, it's, first of all, most people aren't ever going to do that. So the fact that you do it will help you stand out. And if you put something together that people can go follow up on with, let's say, a landing page that you would create so that you can start collecting contact information, maybe there can be like a little video there where you can be flipping through the pages of the book you're putting together. There's a lot of variety of things that you can do. And I talk about this in the society program that you can do to start showcasing what your book looks like. There's a resource that I've recently used where I can show my book on a web page and it sounds like the pages are, are being turned. It's called page flip. So I can demonstrate what the book is going to look like. It's a way to make it feel more real and more tangible. And again, you can, whatever, whatever state the manuscript is in, of course, obviously you want to have enough that you give yourself a good show, but you can use a resource like Hazing, for an example, and create a page flip video and then put a link to that inside on your printed materials or what have you. And people can go check that out. It makes it more real and tangible for you. But you cannot do any of those things if you don't identify as someone who would do those things. So I recommend very early in the process is identify as a publisher author or the author of the forthcoming book and then fill out the name, fill it, you know, fill it in with your the name of your book, the title of your book, and see if that doesn't garner attention and again, early adopters and possibly your first pre-sale orders. Okay. Number seven, think outside the box. This is where you can really have a lot of fun if you work on your mindset. Again, don't just think about the book as the standalone in and of itself. Think about how can I align myself with people that would have the ear of the audience of the people who would potentially want to buy my book. I'll share an example of one of my Mentor Society students, uh, Lisa Dolson. I'll put a link to her interview in the show notes here. Lisa is an illustrator. She is a pattern and surface designer. She designs patterns for fabric. And she came to me and wanted to create some of her designs as a coloring book. And she did that. It's a beautiful book. And it's called After the Rain. And again, I'll put the link to all that in the show notes. And one of the things I suggested to her now, when we when I made this suggestion, it was in the dead of winter in Scotland where she lives. But again, the point is, is that I said, why don't you check some of the local nurseries in your area or gardening centers or florists in your area and see if they ever have talks or have people come in to do presentations and things like that. Again, maybe you could come in on a Saturday and you can talk about the inspiration behind your beautiful book that's all based around flowers. The store owner is always trying to find ways to bring more foot traffic into the store. And of course, while they're there chatting it up with you and potentially buying your book, they also can be there buying seeds and buying soil and pots and, and plants and things that they want to do. So what I'm saying to you is, we think that the only place I can sell my book is in a bookstore or in a or on Amazon. But when I mean by think outside the box, well, who are the ancillary services or businesses or people that has the ear of the audience I want to work with? How can I get their attention and get in front of them? You will have basically next to no competition in that regard because most people that are going to be coming to them aren't going to be selling a book. They are going to be talking about plants, for an example, in a gardening center or soil or seeds. You're coming in from an artistic perspective, an artistic bent, and showcasing the same subject matter, just in a different packaging. So that's what I mean by think outside the box. Think about what local businesses or online, who has the ear of my audience? And think of how can I craft and or bundle my book with something that this other business offers so that we can have a package that can go together. One, the book project I'm working on right now is called Parisian Pastry Adventure. And I'll be sharing more about that soon, but it's basically a book all about 
Paris uh, has illustrations of coloring pages of obviously croissants and saunas and macarons and things like that. It also has a list of cooking schools and workshops that you can take in Paris, more specifically around pastries. It has a list of pastry shops in Paris that someone can go to. It has a day itinerary of someone that is on a culinary adventure in Paris can go do. It has pages in there where you can sketch. It has pages in there that you can color. It has where you can jot down your favorite recipes. You can jot down your shopping list. You can journal about your, your travel experience. It even has a, a link to a playlist of Parisian songs that I've put together, kind of like a cafe or coffee house kind of a vibe. So I'm really working on creating a whole experience with this book project. And what I'm doing is I'm looking for aligned businesses that I could collaborate with. Everyone from someone who arranges tours in Paris, that maybe my book can go into the welcome kit or the welcome bundle. I'm looking at, again, bloggers who are food bloggers or travel bloggers. I'm looking at people who uh, do pastry classes online, either bread or croissants or, again, pastries, macaroons, whatever the scenario may be. I'm looking at that. I'm looking at people who maybe do sketching. So sketching when people travel is a real big thing. And I'm going to be adding pages to the book where someone can sketch. They can color my pages or sketch their own. So I'm looking to align myself with people who teach sketching, more specifically around travel sketching. But you're just seeing how what I'm sharing with you is I'm thinking outside the box. The last thing I'm focusing on is Amazon. I'm focusing on everything outside of Amazon. The book will be available on Amazon, at least that's the plan at the time I'm recording this, but that's not what I'm focusing my energy on. I'm focusing my energy and time on the audience of audiences that have the ear of the person that I think this book would be perfect for and getting on their radar. That's what I mean by thinking outside the box, okay? Number eight, know your work doesn't stop with the publication of the book. It's just beginning. And that's the truth. When the book is quote unquote published, that's when you really roll up the sleeves now. That's when everything I just said about how I am promoting the my Parisian pastry adventure book, that's when my real, and I don't even want to call it work. That's when my fun begins, to be honest with you. That's when the fun begins because I personally don't want to do something that I want to be just passive about. I want something that I can really get behind and get excited by and want to talk about and want to look for opportunities everywhere I can to then let people know about my book project. Like I listen to, as I'm creating this book, I'm listening to the music that I'm recommending in the Spotify playlist. I'm getting myself in the headspace and in the mood to be able to under, to try to understand this audience and how I want them to experience what I'm creating. So again, know that the fun really doesn't stop with the publication of the book. It's just beginning. And always be in that space of looking for the next opportunity. And that ties into number nine, your one collaboration opportunity from a massive breakthrough. I don't know with all of the contacts that I have planned for this book, I don't know which one is going to work. I don't know for sure that any of them are going to work, but I do know that it's not going to not happen because I didn't say anything or because I didn't contact these individual people. Because I know that one collaboration opportunity can have a massive impact on the, the people who receive this book and the sales of the book. Again, if we're relying on our own internal social media and you don't have a large following of potential buyers for that project, you're going to, it's going to take a long time. It's going to take a, a while before people start knowing about the book. You've got to call out almost like a dog whistle to the people who would be the right fit audience for your book project. You have to call them, have them self-identify and come into your ecosystem, come into your world. Now, one of the ways that I have done that in the past is Facebook ads. I've used ads pretty much on every project I've done. But ads, if you don't know it, it can get tricky. You know, you're investing money that you don't know if you have going to get the return on investment on. But 
being able to reach out to individuals who already have the ear of the audience that you want to get in front of, they could introduce you because that comes across like an endorsement. And that endorsement, obviously, if, if you're real and you got a real good product, that endorsement carries massive weight. So if someone, let's say a blogger or podcaster or, or a YouTuber were to interview you and endorse you in what you're working on, that could lead to all sorts of opportunities in regards to growing your email list, pre-sales, the whole nine yards. It's worth the effort to consistently reach out for collaboration opportunities. Because again, you don't need a million of them. You just need a few of them and the right ones to completely open the door for you and turn everything on like a faucet that you can't even turn off. But you've got to be willing to reach out to people and ask for the opportunity. And not just to come on to pitch your book, but to see how you can be of service to them with what you have created. The book will sell itself if you come across as being real, authentic, and genuinely interested in providing support, information, resources, inspiration, what have you, to their audience. I say the key to good collaboration opportunities is to make the person you're collaborating with make them look good to their people. If you make them look good, meaning you you respectful, you show up, you do what you say you're going to do, you deliver on a good product, that is going to make that person that puts you in front of their people actually then say, this is someone that I highly recommend and endorse. And what other people say about us actually a lot of times carries more weight than what we say about ourselves. So when I say collaboration is one of the things you should be actively pursuing, this is where it really, really does make, this is where it becomes true. It's a reality. The last one is forget being a Lone Ranger. Again, we tend to want to isolate, not talk about our projects, not tell people about our projects, wait until they're released, then even then it's like a whisper, oh, oh, uh, I did a book. And then we don't talk about it anymore. We don't share it. We don't talk about it. We don't let anyone know about it. We just hope that someone finds it and maybe goes and buys it. And I'm not saying that that's not possible, but I'm saying it's going to take us to prime the pump as the author creator. Going back to number six, identity, claiming that identity. So as I wrap this up, one of the ways to move past the Lone Ranger mentality is to get yourself in a supportive environment where you will get just that. Support, not just for me, but for other author creators very similar to you that all understand the path that you're walking. One of the things that I have prided myself in with the Coding Bookpreneur Program and now Digital Planner Program that I have is that we meet weekly. We meet three times a month. Actually, it's now moved up. It's more times now, but we meet consistently every Tuesday. And it's, what are you working on? Where are you stuck? What are your wins? What are your challenges? How can we move through them? And I have seen such magic happen within that group because people come excited for one another, um, enthusiastic for each other's progress, supporting each other, cheering each other on, coming in with ideas, connections, resources. You know, in our space, there is not a lot of, in this genre, in this genre of book, there's not a whole lot of support spaces. And that's one of the things I pride myself in is providing that consistent support so that you don't feel alone with it. Or when the ideas just aren't flowing, you can come to the calls and ask me questions and I'll give you on the spot coaching. A lot of times things just spontaneously come to me when I'm actually on a call with you. So if you're listening to this and you want to be in an environment where you can get that support and encouragement and actually get a roadmap and a plan on how to do everything I've said in this podcast episode do check out my Validate Before You Make It audio course. I have a link to that in the show notes. So you can sign up for that. That gets you on my email list. And also there's going to be a link to my Coloring Book Creator Club Facebook group. And you can also join that group. 
and we can get a chance to connect and want and know each other. I would love to welcome you into the program. Um, I love what I do. And I love helping creators get ideas, whether they're in their head or they are going to be in their head soon. I love helping them get that idea from within out into the world and not just have it where it's physically in their hand where they can, you know, have it for themselves, but to the people that would really love and appreciate what they've done. So again, I'm really excited about the new directions I'm going with the program. I've now created an AI tool that I use to help me develop this new Parisian pastry adventure book that I'm working on right now. I'll be uh, doing some uh, trainings around that soon. And then how I use my validate before you make an audio course. And of course, how it segues into my coloring book creator and planner society membership program where you get to work with me and a small but growing group of create what I call creatorpreneurs and helping you get your idea not only done, but out in the world with the support that you need to encourage yourself to keep going. It's something that I didn't see in the marketplace. It's something that I'm proud two years now, over two years now, I've had this program and I'm just over the moon, excited and happy about this. And if this, if you're listening to this, podcast episode, you've been thinking about doing this, you weren't sure how to get started, you weren't sure who could be the one to help you, I would be honored to have an opportunity to speak with you about being a part of it. So anyway, I'm going to go over the, the 10 points really quickly, and then I'll wrap up our episode. So the 10 things you can do immediately to release your fear and move forward with clarity and confidence so that you can sell more books. You've been worried about how you're going to sell the book this is what you need to listen to. One, do your due diligence, i.e. research. Two, pick an idea you can truly get behind. Three, adjust your mindset to either you're going to get the lesson or the cash. If you're consistent, you'll get both. Number four, pre-sell as you create. Number five, get in front of your book. Number six, claim your identity as a publisher author. Number seven, think outside the box. Number eight, know your work doesn't stop with the publication of your book. It's just the beginning. I say know, know that your fun doesn't stop with the publication of your book. It's just the beginning. Number nine, your one collaboration opportunity from a massive breakthrough. And number 10, forget being a lone ranger. All righty. So thank you so much for listening to this episode. I've got so many more getting ready to come out. I've got probably about three already probably another three more that are going to be coming out over the month of September. It's going to be a busy month, the month of September, as you're listening to this. If it's already past September, this is already passed. If you're serious about moving forward, there's still time to get your book done and ready before the holidays. So if this is something that speaks to you, I highly recommend you get in contact with me. I'll have my contact information also inside of the show notes as well. Reach out to me and I would love to welcome you into the course and help you to get your book idea out of your head and into your hands. All righty. Thank you so much for listening and take care.